All right, hello everyone. I just wanted to give you guys a brief introduction to using the terminal. I suspect that most of you, uh, at this point at least, are at least a little bit familiar with using terminals, but hopefully you'll be able to pick up a few tips to be just a little bit more efficient, and I'll try and keep the video as short as possible. And just a quick note on the slides today, I need to give Tyler credit for putting together the original PowerPoint presentation. I just shamelessly stole the slides from him to uh, share them with you guys. All right, so let's take a look at the history. Um, a long time ago, um, people went on their own computer. And in fact, a department like our computer science department would buy a very expensive machine. You can imagine investing in a million dollar computer. The goal is to use that as much as possible. So we want to share it with everyone in the entire organization. So what we do is, oh, and that expensive computer is called the mainframe. What we do is buy a whole bunch of dumb terminals. Uh, back in the day, these were little more than a screen with a keyboard and a way to communicate with the mainframe that did all the work. Um, so everyone in the department would get one of these dumb terminals and they do all of their work on the mainframe. Well, today we don't actually have uh, dumb terminals and mainframes like that. My desktop computer is actually very powerful. But if I want to connect to another computer or I want to take advantage of this kind of te technology, um, what I'm going to be doing instead of using a terminal is running a program called a terminal emulator. So uh, an example of that would be on a Mac. It's actually called Terminal. On uh, Windows, CMD uh, or PowerShell are both terminal emulators. Okay, so why would we want to do this? Uh, first, off times, uh, typing with a keyboard can be much faster than trying to use a mouse, particularly for something like navigating a file system. Um, with tab completion, I can move around very quickly. Um, same deal with like word processing and editing. Uh, we'll find that that's the idea behind Vim and Emacs. Also, is that typing can be faster than using a mouse to edit things. Okay, so two important tips. Uh, my advice is to invest in tools that are going to be something that's good. For example, using a terminal right now might not be as fast for you as just you know using the file explorer and using a mouse to navigate your directories. But by investing in learning how to do this, at the end, you're going to be more efficient. So it depends on what exactly you're doing. Um, I know that in this course, I'm asking you guys to use one of the low-level dumb text editors like Vim or Emacs. They're actually very powerful, and people who get good at using those as tools can program much faster than I can. Um, for my job, I've been spending the last three years as a programmer working at a startup company. We did everything in Visual Studio or Qt, uh, spelled Qt, and I got very good with those tools. Um, I don't have anything against uh, high-power IDEs. I really, really enjoy them, actually. There's a lot of tools that I uh, love having access to. The point that I'm making is that take the time and learn the tools that you're going to be using. And for a course like this where we're actually talking about low-level details in programming and how the code connects to the machine, using a much simpler text editor, I think this is the perfect time to learn that. Okay, the other reason that it's important to think about using terminal emulators and uh, this sort of technology is that this kind of technology can let you work from anywhere. Um, you know, a beach or if you're forced to work from home. Uh, when the pandemic struck, my entire company was sent home to work from home. Um, and being able to connect to a machine somewhere else and still do my job uh, was very, very important. All right, just one little detail as we get started with this. So the program that runs on my computer is known as a terminal emulator. And inside of that, the, there's going to be a program running, uh, and that's called the shell. We, um, um, it's the shell that's actually going to just ask us over and over and over again, what should I do? And we give it a command. What should I do? We give it a command. And it really only does two things. It's going to help us navigate through the file system, through that tree. We can enter all the different directories and look at files. And it's going to run programs. Um, we actually have quite a few options when it comes to shells. Uh, maybe not quite as many as on the beach right here. But here, on Windows, uh, CMD is very popular. One of the downsides to this one is it doesn't usually accept Linux-style commands. Um, the developers of Windows kind of recognize that there are a lot of Windows, or I'm sorry, Linux and Mac users out there who are familiar, who may want to use a terminal that uses commands they're familiar with. PowerShell incorporates a lot of those, so that's the one I'll be using on my computer. I do use a Windows uh, system. Um, 
And then uh, a number of others, uh, they all end, have an SH in there somewhere. Fish, I don't even know how to pronounce those. Uh, the most popular one and the one I believe we're using if you just directly connect to the CSL machines and don't make any changes is the Born Again shell. It was based on the Born shell developed by Stephen Born, and then when they revised it, it was the Born Again. So they came up with this cute acronym, Born Again, uh, shall be a SH. All right, uh, I'm gonna jump over into PowerShell and just do a quick demo for you guys of all the different features um, and uh, little programs, how to navigate, things like that. One sec. All right, I'm just gonna open up PowerShell. I've got two options. I've actually got it um, pinned down here to the taskbar, but if I go over to Windows, uh, I can just type PowerShell. And I've got several options that I just typed power. That's a, but it's enough. I've got several different options here for PowerShell. I'm just going to go with the most basic one without any of the special extensions on it. All right, hopefully this is, no, clearly that's not big enough. One sec, let me figure out how to make this bigger. Okay, much better. So what we see here, this is PowerShell, the, the program up at the top. This is the terminal emulator. And inside of PowerShell, I'm running a, a program called PS. This is my shell. All right, um, and over here, this entire thing all the way, including the little uh, angle bracket there, is the prompt, and that's customizable. It's gonna look different. It probably won't look the same on your computer. Um, and so the first thing I wanna do is just sort of walk through uh, how to navigate. Um, so PW, whoops, switch screens, Mike. PWD stands for Print Working Directory. That's gonna tell me that my current path is C users Mike. Now I just logged in, just opened up the, the shell, and so this is gonna be my home directory. In fact, if I use CD to change directory and back out to the C drive, um, this is my root directory on a Windows machine, I can do CD tilde to get back to my home directory. Um, let's see, some of the other th things I can do, I can list all of the files in this directory with LS, stands for list. Um, you can see all kinds of things here. Uh, let's, um, learn about changing directory. So CD stands for change directory. I can jump into my teaching folder here. I can list these to see what we've got here. I can now jump into my CS354. And I don't have to type the whole thing out because if I just push tab, it'll complete that for me. Here, in fact, let me uh, do that again. CD, if I just like type C, it's gonna give me the first option that begins with C. And then if I hit tab again, it's the next option. That's where I wanna go, it's this class. All right, and then let's see what we got here. We've got a bunch more folders. I've got the summer session. So let's go there. CS3, whoops, 354 summer 2020. And then in here, I've got my lecture notes. I've got my projects and a bunch of organizational stuff like the syllabus. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is make a directory for this particular demo. So I'm gonna call it terminal demo. So MKDIR stands for make directory. Um, I'm not going to use any spaces in my directories. Uh, Windows permits them, but then I have to put the, everything in quotation marks, and I'm not a fan of that. And uh, Linux and Mac in general do not accept spaces. So once I've made that, I can list, and now I see that there are third one down lectures, projects, terminal demo, terminal demo. I've got that. Let's move into there. Terminal demo again, tab complete. Now that is a whole lot of stuff on the prompt. It takes up pretty much the entire screen at this point. Maybe I will revise that someday. Um, but not right now, got a demo to do. Okay, uh, next up, I've got a whole lot of stuff on the screen. So to clear the screen and have a nice, clean, fresh screen, that command was clear, uh, just like that. Okay, so let's see. Um, we talked about moving up in the directory. There's, uh, yeah, we didn't. There's three special different kinds of directory commands. So I can change directory. Um, if I use the dot dot, that'll take me up one level in the tree. So right now I'm in terminal demo. That'll remove me back and I'll just be in the summer session. So CS354 summer. I don't actually want to be there. Okay, um, the tilde I mentioned will take me back to the home directory. Um, so I can do that, CD tilde. That'll go back all the way to user's mic. So T teaching 354 summer terminal. See how quick it is to navigate with the terminal? I could not have done that that quickly 
with uh, file, full file explorer. <coughs> All right, so if we uh, list the contents of this directory, right now there's actually nothing in here. So one of the things we can do to make a file, oh, let me just introduce echo first. Echo is a program and all that it does is repeat whatever I type as the argument following echo on the next line down. All right, that is not very useful. But one of the things we can do is use file redirection. So I can type my hello again, and then I can use the uh, greater than bracket, the angle bracket there, to redirect this output, that text, and put it in a file. So I'm going to put it in demo.txt. And then when I list that, now I have a file in this directory it contains demo.txt. Now, if I wanted to, the program that will read out the contents of a file, as long as it's a text file, and print that to the screen is called cat. So I can cat demo.txt. Oh, and I should mention when I tab completed that, check it out, it added that dot um, backslash for me. So Windows uses the backslash as the separator. Linux and Mac, we use the forward slash. And this dot just refers to the current directory, the one where I'm currently at. If I have more than one demo.txt file and I'm been teaching for a while, I'm absolutely certain I have more than one file labeled demo.txt on this computer. Uh, it knows that I want the one in the current directory, not, not the one I used for CS220 or 368 or another class. So if I use this command now, there it is, it prints out the word hello. That file redirection, if I were to oh, let me, uh, add another word and try and uh, put this in the same demo.txt file. So there it is, still one file, still has the same size. Apparently, hello and nuked have the same number of letters. Yep, looks good, they do. Um, so if I do this again and use cat to print it out, what I see is the word hello is gone and nuked is there. I have nuked the contents of that file and replaced them entirely with the new input. So you have to be a little careful with this file redirection. Um, so, Oops. If I put this back in, okay, I just broke something. Let me rewind and start this um, back for a second. So right now I've got my demo.txt, cat demo.txt will print out hello. If I do want to keep the contents of this file and just continue to add to the end of things, there's uh, the file redirection with the append operator is just the double equals. And now I can add the word world right to the end of that file. Um, demo.txt and then when we cat that demo.txt we can see that we now have hello and world uh, on, on this particular shell it's going to automatically append a new line at the end of uh, every file we'll see that's really very common with text editors vim is going to do that for us too i think i have demoed that in a previous lecture okay let me check my notes Okay, so next up, I want to talk about copying files. Right now, I have a demo.txt file. You can see that right here. If I want to make a copy of that, the command is cp, and I can copy demo.txt. It takes two arguments, and let's call this, uh, the copy of this, hello.txt. Once I do that, I can see that I have both of those things here. Another way to make copies um, would be to use the, the move. That's more like a rename or change locations. So Check this out. If I were to mv demo.txt, we'll call it howdy.txt. It, it is a friendly greeting. Um, and now I ls. I see that demo.txt is gone, completely gone, and it's been renamed um, howdy.txt. Another thing I can do is actually move this to a completely different directory. So I can move howdy.txt. Let's go up a directory and we'll continue to call it howdy.txt. So now we can see if we ls, there's only hello here. If I go back up a directory to just my summer and we look here, I should now be able to see, there it is, howdy.txt right there. Okay, so the next thing, how do you get help about using a terminal? If I'm not sure what the options are, uh, the, key, the, command, uh, the program we wanna run there is man. It's short for manual pages, so I can just do the manual page for print working directory, PWT. And when I do that, it's going to bring up all kind of information about print working directory. 
I can see right here there's an alias so I can also use get location and do the same thing this one might be Windows specific but it's still gonna print out the entire path for me just like PWD does um, there are other aliases GL um, and PWD um, and then extra information so another example if I wanted to read the manual for a cat I can see that it requires an argument all kinds of information here this stuff can be kind of hard to read but it lets me describe like the file it is I can say what kind of encoding it is okay I can see that it hasn't finished it I've got a more over here in the lower left hand corner if I actually want to quit any program even something like man I can just hold down control and push C if I'm on the right screen a couple of times so control C there actually stands for kill I think a lot of us are so used to using it for copy that the first thing we think of when you hear control C is copy but in a terminal uh, or shell control C is going to kill whatever it is we're going to use this a lot you guys are going to write code that have loops that don't end infinite loops or things that just uh, happen really slowly so I think what we'll find is that that's going to come in really handy just stick that one in the back of your memory um, some other quick shortcut things any command that I've already typed I can get back to by just clicking the up arrow so here I am I just did the quick location a little bit ago man PWD these are all the commands I did previously if I don't remember what it was, I can type history, and that will bring up all of the commands I've done recently. Wow, 51 so far. Uh, we're cruising. Um, and there's another way to get even more information about the history. I can search the history by holding down Control and typing R. This is the back search. So if I don't remember what it is or I don't want to type the thing, I can just type a, the first letter. Uh, looks like I did type something with G. Oh, yeah, get location. Uh, back and forth and it'll start filling those in automatically for me all right slightly better example because i did have more than one thing that i looked up with man pages so here i have man cat and then i can just say i've also done man uh, and then i if i just keep typing it will fill in the rest as soon as it gets closer i think i also did pwd so as soon as i get to that p it switches over uh, and then i can just repeat that command all right and just because i'd like to make this demo a little bit more entertaining a little bit so check this out I'm gonna do a series of commands and then pay, so pay very careful attention this is a lot like the shell game so I'm gonna echo win to a I forgot the file redirection echo win to a echo lose to B now I'm gonna move B to C and then I'm gonna copy A to D and then move A to B, and then I'm going to remove B. RMS stands for remove file. And I'm going to move C to A, and then I'm going to print out the contents of A. All right, so take a second. Pause the video if you need to. Walk your brain through this process. What just really happened? And predict what's going to be printed when I push enter. All right, in three, two, one. Uh, it was lose. Okay, so I just wanted to have a little fun with this. Um, <clears throat> and make sure you guys uh, are familiar with how this, this, all this shell stuff works. One final thing, um, if you're on Windows, PuTTY is a program that you can run from the terminal just like this. So I can uh, log into the CSL machines by just typing PuTTY and then it's exactly the same way you would use um, SSH on Linux or Mac. So Putty Dosher at bestlinux.cs with .edu will pull up the uh, a new terminal emulator, the Putty terminal emulator, and it's going to be running the shell here. I can send them my password, and then I'm logged in. Now, on Windows, actually using the Putty graphical user interface lets me gives me all the tools I need to change the size of the font so I'm not actually going to do any work right here until I can go back and change the font size all right one final thing before I sign off for uh, this video um, if I'm logged into one of the CSL machines it's important to type exit to get out of this exit here will not only exit the um, shell program but also the uh, putty terminal emulator 
Um, that's going to log me out from the system, and then I won't be like hanging around logged in, but not actually connected. Uh, same thing for the Windows PowerShell or any terminal. I can just type exit, and that will close up that program. And there I am back at my PowerPoint slides. All right, so I'm going to sign off here. Have a great day, guys.